It's fantastic, isn't it? It's just wonderful, isn't it? Man. I was saying something in your favour earlier on. Uh, um, first time I ever said anything nice about you. But <laughs> fellas like you had the guts to come out and declare that you were gay. Made it easy for other people to do so and help pave the way to today. And congratulate you. Thank you, Vincent. It's been a fantastic day. And I think what this referendum campaign has shown, that we are a people who are warm, but we are looking to, to favour the underdog. And we're a small nation with a huge heart. And today, we are shining brightly across the world, and we are a nation of agents. It's, it's one thing for somebody in Dublin to come out and acknowledge that guy, but for Corkman to come out and not, it must have been very difficult, doesn't it? Uh, we're, we're, we're a very gay city, you know, but uh, it's wonderful. Today, today is a day for the people in this hall, in this, in this great club, because what happened in this referendum, Vincent, was the ordinary person on Ganaw dinner, the grandmother, the mother, the friend, the son and daughter, the brother and sister, recognised it was about the lives of those of us who are gay and making it acceptable and making it equal. And that's what happened. It was a, a national conversation. What was it like growing up gay in Cork? Were you, did you feel uh, nervous, belittled, stigmatised? I did it the hard way. I went to the seminary and spent five years in the seminary. So you hid away, yeah. So I hid away. And then I said... I'm going to leave, and then I met a girl and fell in love, and then left her, and came out later in life. But you know, when when you read the posters, that a mother's love is irreplaceable. Well, I love my mum. I grew up in a house with a mum and a dad. My mum died, but I was lucky. I met a wonderful man whom I'm with eight years, whom I love to bits, and he loves me. And that's what happens. It's about our lives. We fall in love, and we form relationships, and we lead the same as you and your wife and my sisters and brothers. And we we do the best we can, and we have values. And we, we do the very best that we can, because this is about us as people. And that's what happened in this referendum. It became about the story of all of us as people. Uh, when you were in the seminary, did you realize you were gay? Yeah, and I suppose, I always remember one famous moral theology class. I, I questioned the professor, whom I won't name in the program, and I walked into the refectory, and a number of the lads started cheering me, because he, he questioned those of us who were gay. And I said to myself that day, this is not right. And I knew myself that I was gay. It took me a while on my journey to get there, but you get there. You reach a point in your own life where you become accepting and you begin to like yourself and you know that it's How about the question? How did he question you? Well, he was just questioning the whole thing about, you know, the those of us who were gay, they were different and were not morally upright and were not, you know, as the Catholic doctrine would preach. And that's their perspective and that's the, that's the prerogative. I have a different viewpoint to that, but, you know, I think what this campaign did do, it allowed compassionate Catholics to find their voice in the ballot box. Did you get any abuse or ridicule uh, once you came out and acknowledged you were gay? I have to say not since I came out. This was a very difficult campaign for many of us because we went door to door and as the campaign progressed it gave some people an opportunity to give out to us. But what this campaign really did, it gave a passport to men and women to reveal themselves for who they are and to be gay and to be true to themselves. Alan, <coughs> if the government uh, the, the government has come in for a lot of criticism because of the choices they made and how to deal with the fiscal crisis that they, uh, that they, they inherited from the previous government. But if the only thing it did was to get this referendum through, it would be a very significant achievement. And I think you were instrumental in making that happen. Well, Vincent, I think today is a defining moment in the history of our country. I know it's life-changing for so many people uh, right across the country. And uh, it's just an amazing, fantastic day. And I'm proud to be Irish today. There was a time, there was a time when this country turned its back on people because of their sexual orientation. We now have a society and a country that recognizes people's right to equality and we can now celebrate difference. And I think that's an enormous thing. And the road, there's many people who travel this road. You were interviewing David Norris earlier, and my good friend and colleague, Jerry Bottomer, in the later years after, Jer after David started this, has shown great courage and commitment and working, I know, within the Fine Gael party. But what was crucially important also to get, I think, all of the political parties on side was the Constitutional Convention, their recommendation that this referendum take place, 
And I think it is just absolutely incredible. And if I could take an opportunity to pay a particular tribute to the Yes Equality Group, it was an enormous privilege to canvass with them and knock on doors with them and hang out with them in my own constituency. And you're wondering what's happening in different constituencies. The tallies tell me that in Dublin South, we have a between 70 to 71 percent yes vote, and that in, in numbers of votes, I'm hoping it will end up having the highest uh, yes vote in the country. By the way, it appears that um, Longford Ross Common has voted no at the first constituency uh, to vote no, but nonetheless, I think it's also fair to acknowledge that, and he mightn't be your best friend forever at the moment. But Enda Kenny, who came from a very conservative background, and himself never much involved in these issues, became teacher, can struggle for quite a while, and then took on these things, and I think it's a tribute to him too. I, I think he's done a great job in recent weeks in backing the proposal and selling it and urging people to vote for equality. I know that some years ago this would have been, it would, would have been an issue that he'd had great difficulty with. Uh, I've always personally been of the view we should celebrate difference. There's nothing to fear in difference. But the Fine Gael Party, I think members, frankly, of all parties, have travelled a journey in the last few years. And I think the support from the different political parties, the work Ender Kenny has done, the support from cabinet ministers, and the fantastic work of uh, the Yes Equality Group, and people like Jerry Butler, Jerry headed up our LGBT group in Fine Gael, have made an enormous contribution. In the end, it was the Irish people who decided that we should embrace other Irish people and no, never again should a gay person be a second-class citizen in this country. Let's celebrate difference by ha having a Fianna Fáil person on the programme. <laughs> and uh, um, Eamon de Valera will be doing somersaults in his grave if he were to know what's <laughs> going to happen today. He will be utterly shocked. What would you say to Eamon de Valera if he appeared here in front of us? I'd say his republic has finally come of age today. And we're in a much better place than we've ever been before. I think it's incredible. I'm so happy. I've never been happier or more proud to be Irish than I am today. Uh, um, Fianna Fáil supported the campaign, uh, but uh, Fianna Fáil weren't noted supporters of the gay cause for many years, I think you could, you could say. <laughs> and if it's today of all days, we won't, we won't have a party political spot today of all days. Why not? <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I just want to thank Jerry. Um, and thank your colleague Ursula Halligan, whose story, I was out knocking on doors every single day on this for the last three months. And Ursula's story, when she wrote that article last week and spoke about what it was like to spend 54 years of her life hiding and being afraid and being lonely, really touched a chord with people. So many people mentioned that to me. And I think we've seen great bravery in this campaign from people who have shared their stories in the national media to gay people all over Ireland, lesbian and gay citizens, yeah. who put their privacy aside and went out and knocked on doors and spoke about their lives and reached out. And the generosity that they've got in return is amazing. And I've never been more proud to be Irish than I am today. I worked for years with uh, Arthur Halligan in various publications and in TV3. And it never crossed my mind that she was gay. And I, I look back now and think of people that I grew up with and people in the small village I was from and how awful it must have been for them to hide their sexuality. It must have been dreadful, yeah. I mean, today I guess it's an amazingly beautiful day and it's a happy day. I suppose it's a sad day for those who feel that maybe it's too late for them, that this didn't happen before. But also when she wrote that piece, spoke about what it was like to be a 17-year-old girl uh, and that she wanted to help others. And by God, we've done that today. We've sent a message out to every lesbian and gay teenager in Ireland who is afraid to tell their parents, who's worried about how their friends will react or their granny. Your parents, your granny, your neighbours, your friends have gone out, watched their polling station and voted yes. And I think today is going to be an incredible step forward. Yeah, yeah. What Mr. Halligan did by her language in terms of the use of the word imprisoned struck a chord with mothers and grandmothers and it forced them to think about their own so daughters and sons and, uh, and there was an impromptu moment in the campaign 
and Ulster Halligan deserves a debt of gratitude to all of us because it was a one of those moments which defined this referendum campaign. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's true. But also, I feel, Alan, you might have had the same experience in knowing, finding out now people who are gay and you didn't know it before, and you wonder why did that person feel unable to tell me or to own up? And it, something about us may have done, you know, about, may have communicated the homophobic uh, attitude. Unfortunately, this, this has been an attitude that's not just an attitude in this country for decades. It goes back centuries. And I think, apart from the absolutely mind-blowing results of this referendum, the last few months, and particularly the last few weeks, has re resulted in a very important national conversation across this country. I think young people have engaged in conversations with parents and relations of a nature never had before. I think people, neighbors, friends, have considered their attitudes and revised them. And I, I think we now genuinely are seeing the dawn of a very new, very different Ireland. But it's also very important, both in a European and global context. Yeah, because first, Dave, David Norris was referring to The first state ever by popular vote to, yeah. to um, well, I think this give gives, this acknowledgement this to gives courage yeah. to those yeah. in other You'd countries. You'd never have thought it, that Ireland would be the first yeah. to do it. Yeah. Adrian, you've Sorry. looked at, um, you've looked at um, a referenda over the years. I'm sorry. Let me over there to talk to um, you. Um, you've looked at referenda over the years. Uh, how, what, were you surprised at the extent of the of the vote? It's probably going to be around 60 percent. Uh, I think initially I would have been surprised, I, even though the opinion polls were suggesting, yeah. even though the opinion polls suggesting around 70 30. You all suspected maybe the margin would be closer, but looking at the turnout yesterday, that seemed to be suggesting that the yes vote was going to be higher than what maybe the pundits would expect. At the moment, it's looking as if it'll be about 62%, which would be a very big margin. Yeah. Just briefly about the Carl Kilkenny by-election. What's your, what's your prediction there? Uh, on tallies, uh, Bobby Aylward's about 7% ahead of Fine Gael. Sinn Féin's about 11% behind Fianna Fáil. It looks as if probably Kathleen Funchin's transfers will see Bobby Aylward win on the last game. And what's the significance of the result? Um, it seems to me that Fine Gael have suffered quite a reversal, but Labour Party had really dreadful, uh, dreadful it's, vote. It's bad, but then again, by-elections are usually bad for government parties. The big story, perhaps, is how well Sinn Féin have done. They're coming at 16%. We know Ireland have got 9%, so that's a big... Yeah, okay, we're going to take a break after the break. There'll be some more entertainment. Join us then.